I'm not there yet, so do I go for it here? I'm gonna, no, I think I'm just gonna go with the 23 bubble pops. <laughs> What's going on Axie fam? Elijah here back with another video. And today we're gonna be covering the newest, hottest meta that has showed up in the Axie arena. And I'm talking about bubbles. Right now we're sitting at 132 rank on the leaderboard. We pushed up to challenger yesterday, got knocked down a little today. Once I switch some things around, which I'm gonna explain to you in just a second. But yeah, let's just break down this specific version that I'm running right now. Now, Bubble showed up kind of out of nowhere once the Mystic Era started, and the reason for that is because Hotto became available. I'm talking about Heart of the Ocean. What happens when you use this rune is that your Bubble Bombs detonated by this Axie deal 50% more damage which is a boatload as we're going to see in today's video. So if you're confused about how to play this team, what you need to do, I'm gonna let you know all of that right now so that you have a good understanding heading into the arena. Notice how up front I actually have a Dawn. Now these are in very short supply. I'm pretty sure this is a one of one and I picked it up because I thought, hey, it'd be fun to play with a Dawn, try this team out and use, of course, Holy Prayer. Now, I didn't start with this. I started with Last Wish because I was waiting for Holy Prayer to go down. I think you guys can wait if you're on a budget. Prices of runes should continue to go down as the supply increases. So that's just a little tip for you there. But essentially, we've got two sponges and we have one perch at the midline. Now, the reason that lately I'm running my Aqua on the back line is because front to back teams have started to resurface given the fact that bubble meta has come out of nowhere. So what is this weak against? It's weak against beasts that just wanna tear straight through you, Belieber. It's weak against uh, very well thought out shrimp builds that can prioritize axes. And it can also struggle with AOE depending on what runes you're using. Like when I was playing with Last Wish, I was a lot better against AOE because I had that extra endurance. But in Axie, you can't win everything. You're always gonna have counters. Now I'm really good against Curse. I basically auto win against those, but I have a harder time against other matchups. That's just how it is. But yeah, generally you want your frontliner to be a little tanky. You want bubble pace. Since I'm running Holy Prayer, I am putting some D grades on cards I don't really care for, like Risky Fish. I don't want to get rid of Garrow because that's sometimes really good in late game against certain sustain builds. I did the same thing with Risky Fish on my midliner. I'm okay with losing that card, but I do want bubble paste on my Nemo ears here to help distribute it across my other axes, specifically my back liner and then sticky octopus on the perch so that I can keep that in my back pocket if I need it in a crunch time round or in the late game to finish off my opponent's axes. And then on my back liner, you want energy drink S on your Nemo ears and Nemo tail, but this is not to get rid of that card. This is to actually play the card and get the bubble buff that comes when you play aquatic energy drinks. You get two bubbles when you use the card. So you always wanna be playing your Nemo ears on this Axie. You don't wanna lose that card. That would be a huge problem. So I'm gonna jump into a replay of a game that I just played actually and we'll take a look at how it goes down. Again, here I am using the Holy Prayer version, so I'm happy to go through my deck quickly. I don't really wanna play this Risky Fish, I'd rather just get rid of it, because if I thin out my deck, then I can go insane with the bubbles. I can also ramp up faster because I can play my Nemo ears quicker. So I'm gonna be looking to do that. Now I'm gonna speed this one up because it's a sustain team, but there's certain things that you need to remember about when you're playing bubbles. So when you play with Heart of the Ocean, you can generally go crazy in the beginning, just playing you know, without thinking about how your bubbles are stacking, because it's not really until you get to four energy that you're gonna to wanna to be really accurate with your count. By which I mean that once you go to four bubbles, since you're gaining one every single turn, on your following turn, it's going to turn into a bubble bomb. So you don't want that to happen if you're waiting to play a sponge, because what the sponge does is that it converts all the bubbles on the target into a bubble bomb. So your goal is to really be at three bubbles as much as possible when you're going into a round where you wanna play your sponge. Why? Because you're going to gain one and go to four, right? Follow me on this and then you want to play your sponge, which absorbs everything and turns those four bubbles into four bubble bombs. 
Now, if you end up like in this position where you have four bubbles, right? And let's just say we were in four energy territory, we had our sponges that we wanna play, that would be terrible. Because what would happen is next turn automatically, I go to five, and when you go to five, it converts into just one bubble. So you're talking about one bubble versus four bubbles. So this is like the main thing that you need to focus on when you're playing this team, is that when you get to that phase, that you're doing it properly, that you're keeping track. Like, okay, so if I play this Nemo on my backliner, it's got the D grade. That's gonna give me two bubbles when I play it. So I have to be smart, right? And this other Nemo tail is gonna give me two bubbles when I play it. So sometimes there's gonna be scenarios where you actually have to abstain from playing uh, a Nemo elsewhere if you're running like bubble paste on all your Nemos, which is the normal way to do it. Anyway, it's fairly tricky, but I did want to at least give you a heads up that that is what you're aiming for. That's what you need to do. You don't wanna end up in a situation where you play your Nemo and then the only other Nemo that you can draw is like this one and it puts you over the edge or you don't have enough energy to play it and then it banishes. These are all the things that you have to take into account. Back to the game, we're at four bubbles, but right now, like I said, you can just kind of go crazy because it's not really until you get to that energy burst that you want to be super accurate with it. Also, I just want to say that often when you go into your energy burst, even if this turns into, let's just say, a single bubble bomb next turn, the way the deck is built is that you're almost always drawing either Nemo Ears or Nemo Tail so that you can continue to pull them out and you can ramp up fairly quickly through your first deck cycle. One thing you don't want to do is draw Nemo round one, Nemo tail that is, and then play Nemo tail, go get another Nemo tail, and go get another Nemo tail and banish all of them. That would be a bad move because you want those in your back pocket. You wanna be drawing them each and every turn so that you can always pluck a Nemo ear, essentially. Okay, this is really the important thing. You don't wanna end up, basically you don't wanna end up playing your attack cards in most cases your whole first deck cycle, your goal is to be able to play as many Nemo ears as possible. So keep that in mind. Don't just cycle through your Nemo tails round one. Make sure you keep those in your deck so that you can keep drawing them and keep getting Nemo ears. So as you can see, uh, I think my first turn I only had one Nemo and I kept these other ones in my deck as you can see. So now I've drawn them and I'm just gonna keep stacking bubbles. And this is another situation of what I was talking about where I'm just going crazy, right? Until I get to four energy, I'm just popping off. I do manage to time it well here where it looks like I'm at three bubbles, which like I said, is exactly where you wanna be at so that next turn I'm gonna go to four and I'm gonna convert them into bubble bomb with sponge. So already I'm going up to six bubble bomb stacks. That is a lot of damage. And now we can speed up because this is basically what's gonna happen for the next, I, I don't even know how many rounds we're gonna do this for. He's putting up tons of shield. He's got zap, uh, he's got a uh, shield backup. So basically he's retaining his shield. He's gonna go up a very, very, very high amount. And for me, I try something a little different this game. Normally what I do against uh, shield sustain like this, the one that has shield backup, is I usually hit them before they get into their four energy cycle or like right when they get there, I start putting on the pressure. The way my team is built is to be able to actually beat this team, not just draw with it, which is what happens a lot of the time with bubble teams that don't have tiny fan. So one of the cool things about my uh, Dawn up front, and if you can't find a Dawn, perhaps maybe you just wanna get an Aqua if you wanna try this out, is it has tiny fan that gives me that extra firepower in the late game to really you know, help me through this mech potentially. But this game I decided, you know what? My deck's thin, I'm trying this new thing where I banish my risky fishes. How about I just say fuck it and continue to play my Nemo ears up to like, I don't know, 15, 20 bubbles, right? And then I'm gonna go in once I am at not five energy, energy burst, but six. Because when I'm at six, my tiny fan only costs me four energy. So I can essentially, this card here that does 400 damage, when I get to six energy burst, it's gonna cost four energy, do 400 damage, and then I also will be able to just put on tons of pressure onto this backliner. So I don't know if it's gonna work out, but 
you know, I'm trying something new. Now's the time to experiment before we end up in the final era. I'm at 14 freaking bubbles. Yo, my bad guys. I realize this isn't the game where I go up to 20 stacks. I think I'm gonna attack uh, on the next turn with 14. I just reloaded the replay because I realized that that's what's happening. We're gonna go in here, 14 stacks. It does 504 damage. His front line dies, his midliner dies, his backliner loses all of his shield. And what do I have left? A bunch of badass cards. I've got Garo, I've got Oranda, I've got Vulnerable on him. Tons of pressure. He basically is gonna get wiped out right here on the spot almost. And despite his efforts, his shield is not giving him what it normally would. And it looks like right here, right now, Tiny Fan for 439 damage. What a beautiful card to have in your arsenal when you're up against sustained teams like that. They're so, so difficult to kill. So this is the game where I decided that I wasn't going to attack around that 12 or 13 bubble bomb mark and that I was just going to keep stacking. So let's see how this uh, way of going about it plays out. Is it any different? Is it a mistake to do it this way? Should you be more aggressive? Well, it kind of all depends, I think, but it's worth trying out new strategies, like I said before, especially now. Now, this guy is steamrolling with the shield. He's already at 615. Now he's gotten to his four energy burst rather quickly. Now I'm at 15 bubbles. I'm still not attacking because, like I said, I want to see what happens if I get to six energy bursts faster. And I'm gonna get there faster if I don't worry about playing my attack cards just yet. And I still only focus on playing the shield cards. Okay, so I'm talking about basically every cycle, I'm gonna be playing Nemo Ears, Sponge, and then you know if I have another Nemo Ears like right here, I'm gonna play both Nemo Ears, the Sponge, I'm at 19 stacks, 19. And this guy's got 860, 932 shield, over a thousand shield right now. This is absolutely bonkers. Now, when am I going to pull the trigger is the question. Well, my goal was six energy burst. I'm not there yet. So do I go for it here? I'm gonna, no, I think I'm just gonna go with the 23 bubble pops. <laughs> All right, well, I'm at six energy burst. I finally got there, as you can see over here in the bottom left. So even though he's got 1300 shield, basically, Now's the time we rip into him. I know that this is gonna obviously kill these front two axes. Here we go. Oranda coming in hot. We're gonna end up doing, what is the number? 828 damage. And we'll follow up with Garrow. Now he's got Fragile on him. Babylonia, now he's got Vulnerable. I don't know if this guy has Sages. He does not have any, no, he has one white Sage on Cucumber Slice. So the reason I didn't play Tiny Fan there for 400 damage is I wanted two debuffs on him. So that if he plays Cucumber Slice, there's a chance it misses the Fragile. That's exactly what happened. So he's uh, not gonna receive the full benefits of his shield. He's gonna get 40% less, which is just what I need. Now I have my work cut out for me still, 355 shield. This is how these teams are built. They are damn near indestructible versus almost, you know, almost, I don't know, a lot of comps. Like AOE has, I don't know how AOE is ever gonna get through this. But the Garo again, he's got nine cards left. Tiny Fan for 370 damage. He's down to 209 health. And this is where it becomes too much for them to take the heat. I'm just gonna keep driving, keep driving, keep driving. He's healing, but we're already in Blood Moon. He's down to 254 HP. 111 shield now because the Fragile kicks in with the Garo eyes. And now I think one more Tiny Fan. Oh, I actually go for smaller attacks, but when I realize he's weak enough, Tiny Fan 439, he doesn't get the damage reduction because I broke the shield. And there you have it, bubbles. Bubbles going crazy. Now, what do I think about this for the long haul? Well, I don't know, it's hard to call it right now. I wouldn't go crazy uh, on this. I think that it's hot right now. It's just got here. It's very strong, obviously, because you can do everything at once. You can ramp, you can defend, you can build up for a lot of damage. But you have to remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And we have a lot of time left. While I round out my thoughts about this comp, I'm just gonna load this replay up so you can see how, how it does against AOE. Now again, if you're facing tons of AOE, you're gonna want last wish, okay? So here we go with our Nemos, we're cycling. Feel free to go crazy in the beginning, like I said. And this time I have my Hotto Aqua in the middle. This was before I was facing a bunch of front to back. 
Uh, also, my front line is tankier with Last Wish, so I felt like it was okay to have it at the mid, but when I have uh, Holy Prayer is way weaker, front to back is even more dangerous, uh, even AoE is more dangerous because the feathers that they have do so much damage, so I put my Aqua on the back line when I'm up, uh, when I'm playing Holy Prayer, and then with Last Wish, I'm gonna be okay, I think, with it at the mid. At least that's what it was a couple days ago. So, yeah, is this comp, is it really the bee's knees for the long haul? I just think we're gonna see a lot of optimization that we haven't seen yet. So there's gonna be, you know, people will figure out what's the best way to play Endless Anger, what's the best way to, you know, obviously sustain is already kind of doing its thing. Um, and then curse comps, I don't know if those are gonna stick around because everyone wants Holy Prayer, but if no one's running curse comps, Holy Prayer is not really as useful. So then maybe if that slows down, curse comps come back. It's gonna be really interesting. I do see this having potential basically all the way though, given, like I said, everything that it can do. Here you can see me just making it very hard for I'm cute here to get the right amount of damage in that it wants to get in. 252 damage, follow it up with a perch for 72, 72, 72. Everything died right there. This is just how it goes with this team. It's, it's you build, you build, you build, then you destroy. Build and destroy. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. This is still a bit close, but I redraw my perch and his axes go good night. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment, let me know what you wanna see next. Hopefully you learned something about the bubble team. You can consider it as an option. And yeah, that's gonna be it. Love you guys, catch you in the next video, peace.